everyone's welcome. Today's guest has been called a cosmic catalyst, a maverick mischief maker, and a galactic goofball. He redefines how business is played in the 21st century at the intersection of evolutionary growth, impact, and fun. He is the creator of the Cosmic Journal, the author of Evolved Enterprise, and the founder of Maverick 1000, a global collective of visionary entrepreneurs making a serious difference in the world without taking themselves too seriously. An avid doodler and a steadfast proponent of adding more purposeful play into your life, he delights in keeping things weird, wonderful, and full of wonderment. A firm believer that we all have our own cosmic alarm clock that goes off at exactly the right time to fulfill our destiny of greatness, he has spent his life exploring that connection of head, heart, and highest purpose. Please welcome Yannick Silver to the show. Welcome, Yannick. <laughs> hey, Ellie. Yeah. It's so good to have you here. Thank you for being with us today. Now, Evolved Enterprise, that is certainly a timely concept. Talk to us about what that concept means to you. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I wrote that book a couple of years ago, and it's really about how business can have a, a greater difference in the world, make a greater impact, and at the same time, make more revenue, profits, all the things that businesses typically want to do uh, by creating ways of, of really capturing the hearts of, of their team members, their the, the people that, that are buying from them, you know, not just being consumers, but being communities that want to become zealots and, and stand for the cause and mission that the company's on, and also attract more incredible partnerships and celebrities and icons, really everything. It's all about Business to me is the greatest lever for for making a difference, and and it's like we can continually evolve. What does that look like? Amazing. So, how did you make your leap into entrepreneurship? <laughs> I think I was kind of born into it. Um, so, my my parents uh, and I immigrated from Russia when I was three years old, and it was me, my mom, my my grandmother, my dad had about two hundred thirty eight dollars in his pocket, and within about six months of coming here, not really you know much use of the English language, came here. And he ended up, uh, he had an ultimatum from his hospital that he worked at and he, because he was doing some stuff on the side and, and he ended up uh, quitting and decided to start his own company, medical equipment sales and service company. Wow. And so like any kind of family business, you grow up in it. So at 14 years old, I was telemarketing, uh, calling on my own clients at 16. The only way I got a car was he kicked me out and said, okay, go, go, Mr. Yannick, go make some sales. And so at 16, I got a car, but, you know, cold called these 16, uh, 60 year old doctors, 50 year old doctors as a 16, 17 year old, essentially punk. And it was it was a huge uh, learning curve. And, and so just naturally, I, I, I got in there. And then my very first thing was some doctors were like, oh, you're really good at this marketing thing. Maybe you can help me get more patients. And, and then that grew from there. And then pretty quickly, the Internet was starting to happen in, in 2000. Yeah. And that's when I got that itch to go do my own thing. And that was probably the first sort of what I call the cosmic alarm clock moment. Yeah, that that push to go out on your own. Now, even though you've been kind of born into it and, and had this lifetime to cultivate your skills in entrepreneurship, it hasn't always been smooth and easy. So how have you been able to persevere through those tough times? Yeah, those, those are, I think every entrepreneur, no matter you know, how, however long you go through things, it, you're going to have those. Mm -hmm. And and that's where you come out better. Uh, that's, that's where you get that, that pure, you know, that evolution that, that, that we think about. And, and for me, it was really interesting because when I first got started, Elia, as I was saying in 2000 with the internet, so I literally woke up at three o'clock in the morning with this idea for something called instant sales letters. I woke up and I'm like, I love questions too. And, and maybe we can talk about best questions, but the question was like, how can I create a fully automatic website that makes me money while I sleep is incredible value to people. Um, and, and it's something that I love to do. And so I woke up with this idea for instant sales letters and I got to work at that at two, three o'clock in the morning, I think whenever I woke up and, and then pretty quickly that was uh, on its path to be a six figure company. And people are like, Oh, how did you do that? Can you help me? Which then turned into kind of success after success after success. And then about maybe 13, 14 years ago, I just really looked at my life and I'm like, you know, I asked a really simple question, which is, am I happy? And would mm -hmm. I be happy doing what I'm doing the next 10 years? 
And when I was really honest in my journal, the, the answer was no, you know, outside looking in, making a lot of money, had a lot of people that I had been helping uh, take their own personal missions and, and what they want to do out into the world. Um, great family, great reputation in that space, which isn't that easy. And but but there was something missing. And that's when, you know, another cosmic alarm clock moment is what I, I would call it. And, and so I started doodling, what would that look like? And I came up with these three interconnected circles. And it was originally a dollar sign, a heart, and a, a, a happy face. So it was like, make more money, have more fun, and, and give more. And, and that was the start of something called Maverick, originally Business Adventures. And, and so I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to do this thing. We're going to have Baja Doom Buggy races. We're going to take other entrepreneurs and people that I love. We're going to have business sessions in the middle of nowhere. We're going to have a charity element. It sounds really amazing. And then I ended up losing forty thousand dollars on the first trip. I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever, that's okay. It's it's uh, you know just a, an investment into this new business. And then about four hundred thousand dollars in, my wife's like, um, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. And, <laughs> and that that so that was the big inflection point, the big turning point where you know up until that point, everything was just like super easy. It's just you know because I, I I still believe in this. What I wrote in my one of my very first journals was, I get rich by enriching others ten x to hundred x in return. And that was the, the the value framework for everything that I do. And this was the first time that something wasn't working. And mm. it was like, okay, now, you know, I could very easily just go back to the digital marketing world and, and just go back to what I was doing, but there was no growth there. Mm -hmm. And and so th this was the time when you, you know, you really take stock of everything. Yeah. And and it was like, okay, the same playbook wasn't working. And it was, it was a really, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a very difficult, dark period where I'm like, like to things are just very confusing. It wasn't working like something I was so passionate about. I couldn't understand why I couldn't make it work. Um, I literally remember one time throwing a cereal bowl, thankfully a plastic one across my wall um, in my family room and, and being like, you know, what's going on? Because everything up to that point I had, I'd been able to figure out. And it yeah. really took me stepping back and, and just digging out almost like it, it was like, I had to start from, from basics again. Like what right. made a good day. And and so I'm like, okay, I had, you know, been studying, just learning, immersing myself in personal development, personal growth work. I mean, literally at 17 years old, I had an Earl Nightingale tape in my car. That's what I was listening to over and over again. And then all these other people and and my friends were like, what the hell is that? So, you know, I had been a long time student of this and I was like, all right, let's go back to, to real basics. And so it was, okay, what makes a good day? And I came up with these nine M's. Um, and it was like, okay, if I have more meaning, so it's like, okay, what do I, what do I have gratitude for? And starting with, with gratitude. And at this point I had sold my Aston Martin, um, you know, not like, oh, boohoo, you know, poor Yannick. It was like, you know, it's a thing. And, but I had this like clunky MDX and I started with, okay, like, what do I love about this MDX? What do I, you know, I can park it anywhere. I don't have to get it detailed all the time. Like my Aston, I can put my paddle boards in there and not worry about it getting muddy. And when I take it to the river. And, and so, like, you know, starting from like the, the, just meaning and, and gratitude. And again, everyone's probably heard of these things, but it's applying it and, and doing it. And then it was like movement. If I move my body every single day. So there became these nine M's. Um, one of them was magic, like looking for synchronicity or being aware of it. That was a really, really big one. Um, and, and that's like one of my favorite things. And then it was um, mentoring. Um, if I could provide some help to someone else, I knew I felt better. Or asking for help. You know, you also feel feel good in, in that way, receiving it. So it became these nine M's and I have a blog post um, about it. I call this return path to, to, to joy and happiness. And it was like kind of the way that, you know, if you have a good day, you create a good week and you create a good month. And, and things started slowly just coming back together from there. And then what I, what I really had to do, Ellie, was, was explore my why. My why wasn't to build an adventure travel company for entrepreneurs. It was to change the way business is played. And that's what I, what I got to. And then using deep reflection and deep questions. And, and so like one of my favorite questions during this time was I, I asked my 111 year old self, um, you know, the wiser, all knowing, not all knowing, but, you know, coming from a different uh, timeline, essentially, or a different, different place and angle and saying, you know, what would, what would my 111 year old self tell me? And the answer that I got was light a thousand suns who each have the potential to light another thousand suns. I'm like, oh, okay. And so that was truly the, the, the change where we changed the name to Maverick Business Adventures to Maverick 1000 to represent this idea that one entrepreneur could uh, change an industry, but a thousand together could help change the world. 
And, and things really just changed from there where really started leaning into, okay, what, what is this? And it's not a venture travel company. It's a much bigger, deeper thing. And, and then things started turning around and then also like learning all these pieces that eventually became evolved enterprise. So I was, you know, really incredibly blessed to have opportunities to hang out with some incredible icons, some very well-known ones, and then some very unknown ones who all had pieces of this idea of this evolved enterprise. And then when we created a deeper mission and greater impact in what we're doing, things really started picking up from there. And would you say that those nine M's that came to you that then provided this step-by-step -step framework for you to utilize to shift things, would you say that was the fuel that allowed you to not go back to your golden handcuffs? That was the daily practice, um, right? And, and and to me, so much has been about daily practice. It's like we we have our big dreams and our big purpose, and and those continue evolving. But it's it's the daily practice of of what are the non negotiables for you in, in your life. Like for me, it's meditation and journaling, and and actually during that time period, meditation was 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 one of the things that I never thought I could meditate. So that's one of the M's is mindfulness, and I never thought that 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 could really work for me. So I have a million dollars, a million ideas a minute. And it was just like, okay, well, I don't think I could stay still. So it was the, 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 just the daily practices that, that really created that space, but then also the deeper why, right? Because I think it was Nietzsche who said like, you know, you can, you can um, go through any, any how or something like that. If you have a, if, if you have a deep enough why and the, and the why was never originally to build an adventure travel company. That was just that expression. But the essence of it was to change the way business is played. And so we've really changed that. And that was that was a huge part is like going deeper and deeper into the why of, of what you're doing, because that's going to allow you to show up and keep showing up because business and, and everything all of life is, is really this cyclical movement like this. And, and, and being able to see that that there is going to be another cycle and another path that opens up. Absolutely. So piggybacking on really harnessing that why, the more that your why was crystallized, is that what, is that the true definition of success to you? Is having that, that clarity about your why and then actually leaning into that to do your greatest work in the world? Yeah, I think that's, that's a huge part of it. I think it's being clear on your purpose being clear on what is that gift that that you want to share first with yourself, and and that that was another big thing was continuing to work. And, and you know, I know you're. This is a lot of your work because so much of it. I when I started looking at where I was, I was like, yeah, I, I like myself, but I don't think I loved myself. And and so much of it was uncovering shadow aspects of of, of different parts of myself, and and looking at okay, you know, you have. The, the, the gift is always mixed in with the shadow part as well. So it was looking at, I, I really, you know, think of myself as a catalyst site and catalyzing other catalysts. And it was like, okay, but what's the shadow aspect of that? It was starting a lot of things and not always finishing. And, and it was like, okay, looking at that part, looking at why didn't I want to give a hundred percent? Why didn't I want to go all in on something? And that was, that was a big one. And, and then I could trace those patterns literally back to school where it'd be like, I'd be like the last one into a test in college, um, probably even before that, where, you know, I borrow a pencil, uh, I had been out the night before drinking or whatever, coming in, hung over, be like, ah, whatever. And I'd be the first one out and I get like a solid, like B, B minus, whatever it was, but, but, you know, I could always get through that way. And, but that was a really deep insight of like, okay, what, what does it look like to go all in? Mm -hmm. Because it was scary for me to, to start looking at, um, like being all in for something. So, so continuing to unravel all these deeper parts of ourself. And, and there's so many great healing modalities and all sorts of things where, you know, from the meditation, from that kind of insight work, from um, sometimes uh, ceremonial work was a really, really big one, um, working with different uh, elders and wisdom keepers. So all of it was, was really powerful. And then also being like following your heart. I think that's a huge one. So I talk about, you know, connecting your head, which is your business side, your marketing side, whatever it is to your heart, which is the impact you want to make in the world. And then your higher purpose, like why the heck are you here? And to me, that, that would probably be the biggest definition of success is just honoring that and creating more of that alignment. Amazing. So that one thing that I love about 
your processes for living in that alignment, for connecting to your higher self, for showing up fully as you, for living uh, your life on purpose. I love the notion of more incorporating more purposeful play. And that that sense of curiosity that you bring to everything. So you you've referenced a couple times asking the questions. And mm -hmm. so let's talk about that a little more. Let's dive into how you stay open and curious, how you formulate these questions that then um, open up more connection and, and, and calling for you. Yeah. So the, the question is to me, like the better your question, the, the deeper your answer is going to be. And I love, I love great questions. So I keep a little notepad of, of questions in my phone and, and anytime I, I hear one, I'm like, oh, that's a good one. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll add it. But, you know, as I said, that that moment where I was like really lost and it was I asked my 111 year old self, what would I do? And that's a good one, because then you can imagine this this archetype really of this 111 year old self that's seen so much. And 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 it really matters to me, like the the more you um, the more you play with it, really. So the more you're like, OK, well, I'm going to let's invite in this archetype. Let's, in, you know, let's, let's, you know, take a moment and, and just get centered and, and ask that archetype, no matter if you believe it, if this is completely made up or not, it, it's actually really powerful, but you know, just, you know, just decide I'm going to play with it a little bit. And, and then what I do even more powerfully is I want to have a conversation with that archetype. So I, I'm right-handed. So I'm going to ask my questions using my right hand and then I'm going to answer using my left hand and we're going to go back and forth and answer as that 111 year old self. Or, you know, you can do this as, as any archetype. Um, it could be the universe. It could be, you know, source it could be God, whatever you connect to. And you get a really amazing, deep conversation. And that was uh, one of the ways, you know, just recently showed up with the Cosmic Journey Oracle that I created is there's 11 of these cosmic Q&A cards. So that's a really, really powerful advanced technique of having this ongoing conversation. But the questions, a couple others that I really love, um, one of them came from Brené Brown's book, Daring Greatly, which was essentially, what would I do even if I knew it would fail? And it's a huge aspect to look at that because a lot of times you've heard, okay, what would I do if I had six months to live? Or what would I do if I couldn't fail? This question to me is so powerful because it allows us to say, okay, what would we kind of put our life force towards, even if we're not going to have a result you know, so many of us, especially entrepreneurs, are so oriented towards what's the result. And it was it was during this time a lot of um, a lot of deep kind of spiritual work really came up too. There's a great book called The Great Work of Your Life by a guy named Stephen Cope, and in there he references the Bhagavad Gita and across all these different people like Desmond Tutu and, and Nelson Mandela and um, um, Harriet Tubman and Susan B. Anthony, like when they found their dharma, their true purpose. But one of the aspects of the Bhagavad Gita, which is one of our oldest spiritual texts, is this idea that you're only entitled to your labor, not the fruits of your labor. And for entrepreneurs, this is this idea that putting your full heart and soul into the work and then being okay with whatever happens after. And that's what that question really opens up for you is, what would I do even if I knew it would quote unquote fail? And, and most of the times, you know, I can tell you from personal experience, if you truly put your heart and soul into something, it's almost impossible to fail. But the reward, again, has to be that part, like the, of, of putting everything in and not being who cares what happens, but having cheerful expectancy of what's going to happen after. Yeah. So those are a couple of my favorites. Those are great. So enjoying the journey, enjoying the journey uh, yeah. and not being as tied to the the outcome that you're expecting. I love that. So you also referenced earlier that you have been able to work with some of the biggest names in the world, some of the most profound uh, people out there. What is the best piece of advice that someone has given you? Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I've, I've been really fortunate to, to spend time with a lot of interesting people. Like I said, some very well-known ones and, and also like very unknown ones who are just, uh, to me, living living and, and, and applying themselves in this really aligned way that had heart, higher purpose. And uh, when, when I, I look back, that, that's, been, that's been probably the, the biggest advice is, is that alignment. And one of my friends who's not as well known, this guy named Ari Weinswig from Zingerman's, they have a great company in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And he's very transparent, 
very vulnerable and he'll say, you know, here's our, our vision, here's our mission. And here's, you know, sometimes we're, we're out of integrity with what we talk about as our values. And it's just like, when we know, when we start feeling that, then it's like time to evaluate where we are so that we can get back into that, that alignment. So it's, it's never like a one and done process. And that's why I love this notion of, of evolving or evolved enterprise. It's like continually, uh, you know, you're, you're continually evolving and, and cycling up to make sure that you can find that alignment. Um, I think another one uh, is, is about really intermeshing your, your life. Um, so making sure that what you're doing feels like, feels like play. It, it feels fun. It feels like, you know, it's something that, that you, that you want to do. Um, I remember asking, um, and, and Ellie, you've had a chance to spend some time at Necker Island too with, with Richard Branson. And we, you know, we, we do an annual trip there. I think it's been 11 or 12 times now. And, and I remember just asking, you know, just sort of these random questions, right? Like every once in a while. Um, and, and I was asking him something like, Hey, what do you want to, what do you do when you don't want to, I don't know, go to a meeting or, or do something the next day? He's like, he's like, that never happens. I made a commitment. I just want to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to show up and, and be fully present. I'm like, Oh, okay. That's a really interesting one. And, and so, you know, I, I continue learning so much by just observing sometimes by, by seeing how people act, by seeing, you know, if their public persona is different than, than how they are on, you know, when you, when you meet them personally. And, and that's, those are my favorite people where, where there's such a, you know, it's just congruous. Yeah. The, the alignment of head, heart and higher purpose, and also the alignment of the public and the private, right? Where they're just showing up everything they've created this life that they love and they show up fully and presently and authentically um we that's something that i think all of us can aspire to and and really create our life to be one of alignment and mission and purpose and we can it's just like yeah. if we give ourselves permission to do it or we think that it's possible and especially by seeing stories and hearing stories uh, and I know you brought some great people onto this, like hearing stories that then it becomes more alive by seeing examples. And that's how originally, you know, I would do it. It's like, look at people like that you're automatically attracted to for some reason. And then that's asked that, you know, we talked about shadows as kind of like this dark side or part that you don't want to necessarily, it doesn't have this, as much light that shows to the world, but there's also a golden shadow, right? So there's heroes that you look up to in some way, and that is you at your highest expression. And so there's a reason that you're attracted to to them and then it's but it's also not being a, attached to that hero worship or something like that or putting someone on a pedestal but being like oh yeah that's an archetype or a characteristic i really love let me see how i can fully embody it at the times when i'm my highest self so powerful now what's one thing that you wish one of your mentors had taken you aside and told you um that you had to learn the hard way <laughs> oh, um, that's a good question because there, there's, you know, it's so interesting because I think that every single thing that happened is in the, in the perfect way so that it's set up this perfect curriculum and, and, um, and, you know, of course you're like, when you go through the hard times, you're like, oh, I wish I didn't have to go through that. But everyone who comes out the other side and, and we all do, it's like, those hard times make you and, and they like, for me, that created so much more empathy for, for other people and leaders and entrepreneurs. And, and, um, I think what I would like to have maybe known or, or heard about, at least so I knew that this was the path going forward. Was, and and I, I see this with so many entrepreneurs I work with is that no matter what is success, quote unquote, from the outside, that there's usually another layer, another level. And if you, ha you have to typically give up something, some part of your identity, some part of something so that you can take that next leap to the next cycle, to that next uh, point. And, and that next cycle is usually doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel so comfortable because it's usually something different that that's not the same thing that got you to where you are is gonna take you to this next spot of really continuing to fully align with your heart, higher purpose. And it's usually gonna be like this intuitive, magical leap that makes sometimes no logical sense whatsoever. Um, and, and, but, but it's so rewarding um, out the other side and it's so magical. So if, if maybe someone has shown me, it, you know, it's really hard to have someone say, here's what you need to do. But if you know, Hey, this is probably going to happen. Um, then, then that would have been a, a really great, great thing to hear about. 
Yeah, agreed. Sometimes knowing to get comfortable in, get comfortable being uncomfortable, or sometimes knowing that that when you get to that next level and you're you're right there, and you know that you need to stretch, you need to reach. I loved your point about sometimes you need to let go of an identity that you held or a a part of your identity that has has gotten you to where you are in order to get where you want to go. I think sometimes, or especially entrepreneurs, we might be conditioned to hold on, hold on, hold on, push through, hold on, push through, yeah. hold on. And so I think that notion of letting go. It, it's it's super, super powerful. powerful. Yeah. And, and think of it as cycles, right? So we keep coming back to things that we loved especially as kids, like I love, there's this golden age of like, let's say eight to about 13 um, or 15, maybe where, where you look at things that you really love. Like for me, it was being a class clown and, and parodies and, and being goofy and, and, uh, and, and then just, you know, fun little mischievous things and so forth. And, and it keeps sort of coming back um, over and over again in a higher essence. And the other part of this is think about like cycles, like, like nature always has so much to teach us if we, if we pay attention. So, there's a cycle of the seasons, right? There's spring, summer, fall, winter. Uh, spring is this, this birth or, or rebirth. And then summer is is this celebratory. Things are just increasing and, and the energy is is increasing. And then fall is the harvest time. And then winter is the time of, of you know, death or, or, or just going back inward. And then so that you can be reborn in, in a higher way. And so if you go and think about that in your own cycles of business and your own cycles of life, that's really important. As you're saying, Ellie, like, you know, so many times we just want to keep pushing through and pushing through and pushing through. And that's just saying, okay, we want to just be in summer all the time. And that's not possible. So allowing yourself that, that natural cycle. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great analogy and a, a really powerful reminder to, to look to nature and, and think of it as cycles. I mean, we can't have rebirth without death. We can't grow without letting go and making space for that next level. So that that's a really powerful framework that the audience can can use. And they can ask, am I in winter? At what season yeah. am I in right now? And, and it's going to come to you. Journey? Like it's going to happen no matter what, because, you know, so many times we get bonked on the head. I call this the universe sort of, you know, continuing to bonk us on the head harder and harder and harder. Like for me, it was okay. $400,000 is enough to be like, all right, well, I think there's, you know, I need to do something different here. I have a friend that was like 4 million. So it could be financial. It could be relationship. It could be health wise. And, and, but if you have joy as your sort of GPS that you're continually being attracted to, and then to me are like obstacles and pain are these guardrails and, and we keep moving this way. So a lot of times you look at obstacles and be like, Oh, I wish I didn't have this, but, obstacles and pain are a lot of times the things that that keep us moving and so if you're in alignment you're going to move much smoother through this otherwise you're going to have these really big massive bonks on the head and it'll get harder and harder until you pay attention yeah so what brings you joy what's your north star what brings me joy um sometimes it's like the littlest thing of like i was just meditating before our session and it's really windy out today and it's a beautiful like 70 degree day, but having like this beautiful, like humid, balmy wind coming through, I'm like, oh, this is really, really nice. And so that brings me joy of just being in the moment. And that wasn't always the case because on, on the Enneagram, I'm a type seven, which is someone that wants to explore everything, find everything, you know, check off everything, have this big ultimate life list and so forth. So that that brings me a lot of joy being present in the moment like that and just more so like even like my, my kids who are 16 and 14, just these little moments, like watching my son play hockey and and doing something out on the ice or, or my daughter like cheering or doing a flip or just something like these little, little tiny moments. Uh, those have been really joyful. But then other bigger joys for me are, are play, like just laughing with friends. Uh, that brings me a lot of joy. Um, when, when I can fully utilize my talents, like when I can, help somebody see something new that that they didn't see themselves and then knowing that that's going to have a greater ripple of impact for for others that they want to serve and and ideally even the world like that brings me a tremendous amount of joy 
Um, so that that's really powerful. Uh, I don't know. There's so many things. Um, I, I think I think cosmic creativity would probably be the uh, the the one big wrapper of what brings me joy of, of just listening to the universe in some way and being like, Oh, okay. I should have this journal that is a bunch of doodles. And, and I'm just, you know, going to come to it from a place of this is my journal that, that I want to write for myself. And it's going to be a guide, my own sort of galactic instruction manual. And, and then it became an Oracle. And then I'm like, huh. And, and there, that brought me so much joy. And then seeing that, that progression of where it has gone. So, you know, that brings me a lot of joy. So cosmic creativity. Yeah. Playing more, right? <laughs> playing more with, with the universe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. With the universe, with loved ones. I, I love that. Um, so piggybacking on that, self-care is absolutely critical, right? You can't be present. You can't go out there and, and serve at the level that you do. You can't each one teach one or, or continue to light uh, a thousand suns right. if you yourself are running on empty. So what are some of your self-care practices? I know you've touched on meditation, you've touched on being in nature, um, you've touched on doodling, but what else do you do to ensure that your cup remains full? Yeah, one big thing is journaling. Um, that's one of my favorite practices that I've used for years and years. Um, it was a sporadic practice for a while and then it became a daily and, and for me, I love journaling because it's been scientifically proven to make us happier. It's, it brings more awareness into our lives. It's, it's just, um, you know, and the deeper you go with it, the deeper you'll, you'll, you'll get. So it's not like, oh, I had a, I don't know, chicken sandwich for, for lunch today. Like, that's not very interesting. That's not really journaling. But if you can, so typically I will start, I'll write uh, before bed. So I have a particular spot and I will I will just write. And what I start writing about is usually not the same thing even that I end up writing about, but it's just a process of expressive writing that gives us more happiness because it creates a beginning, a middle, and an end uh, to whatever story or whatever we're bringing awareness to on that page. And, and so I love journaling. I think it's such a great practice. And so many people have tried it or given up on it or like, well, I don't, I don't want anyone else to read it or whatever the case is. And there's a lot of ways of, of, of getting through that where you could lock it up if you want or, or hide it or, or do, you know, or write in code or, or really, you know, it's really meant for you. So the, the deeper you go in it, the better. And I like experiments, Ellie, like, you know, it could be trying one thing and, you know, you don't have to try eight things at once. That makes it really hard, but say, okay, I'm going to try an experiment of, I, I like 33 days, it's a specific number. It's beyond the month. You know, it could be 21 days, whatever it is, but every single day and you give yourself a window, an easy way to win. It could be a 10 minute or 15 minute window. Uh, where you're like, hey, I'm just going to journal. I'm going to try this and and then see at the end of that time period, does that make my life any better or not? So those are those are big ones. Um, making sure that you have time just for yourself. And, and and I'm, you know, getting better at this. It's something I want to do even more. But but there is some guilt sometimes. Where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to take an entire day off and and just go, you know, hang out by the river and go paddle boarding and, and not, you know, not not do anything else. The big thing also is a phone and electronics, like turning that off and just having times when, when you can do that. So I like, I like bigger moments. So, you know, again, back to our cycles in nature, like so equinox is coming up. Um, typically I do like a three day juice cleanse uh, leading up to equinox and then equinox, I'll go out into the woods and, and just spend time really just reconnecting again. So each of the time solstice equinox is usually a, a bigger kind of uh, connection period for me. That is amazing. Um, <laughs> you're so fortunate to live somewhere where you can actually get out into nature. But you know, I think even if someone, even if someone is living in an area where they don't necessarily have woods, to your point earlier, with our phones <laughs> and all of the devices that we have, yeah, there's so many apps. That. There's visualization apps. There's you know, they they can put on backgrounds and envision that they are in these places that bring, bring them joy or peace or um, in these restorative moments. Right. And it's also, you know, so I live in a suburb area where, you know, we, we have some woods, but it's not like a big like they're in our neighborhood. There's like a little patch of woods and a little bamboo forest, but anything could be this magical place. And so I go into the bamboo forest where no one really goes to. It's like behind a couple houses and I sit there and I meditate or I go to this little tiny creek by there. But then 10, 15 minutes away is a much bigger, nicer river. And I'll go there for the entire day. And so, you know, usually most people are 20 minutes, a half hour from something, even if it's a little park, 
just a little oasis that you can have. But yeah, and also, like you said, there's opportunities daily to visualize and, and put yourself in those states. And, and you can literally be, you know, anywhere in a cramped apartment and, 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 and be somewhere else because it's all about what is the meaning and what is your own way of, of connecting that way. Yeah, absolutely. So you recently went to Antarctica yeah. <laughs> and you were able, I mean, talk about going and creating these incredible experiences and, and, uh, not going to your, your own backyard, but really seizing, seizing these opportunities. So what was the genesis of Antarctica? <laughs> it was about 10 years ago on my ultimate life list. I, you know, I was writing down all, all the places I want to go and visit and, and Antarctica is definitely on, on that list. And, um, and, and I like, you know, random funny things. So I'm like, Oh, it'd be really funny to have Jimmy Buffett do a concert in Antarctica and have like these plastic palm trees or whatever. So that was sort of always the vision. And we got close a couple of times. And then one of my friends was like, Oh, I know Jimmy Buffett and his managers owe me a favor and let me contact him. And so it was like looking like it was going to happen. And so we're like, all right, well, we'll book an entire ship and, and booking an entire ship is not the cheapest thing. Um, so, you know, it was a pretty big commitment. And during this time when, you know, not everyone is traveling or everyone's, you know, have their own level of, of what they want to do. And so it was a pretty big leap of faith, but so many things were opening up where we didn't want to like sail through the Drake passage. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, we could do this fly in, fly out thing. And, and then the ship that we really wanted became available the next day. So it was like so many signs. And I believe in, you know, looking for these, these, these signs and, and, and these signals from the universe. And it's like, okay, let's do it. And, at the, and then at, what happened at the end of the day was with Jimmy Buffett wasn't available. It didn't happen, but it, it actually turned out even better because then we were able to bring in Jacques Cousteau's grandson, Philippe Cousteau, and his wife, Ashlyn, um, to talk about what's going on there with the oceans. And really the whole trip, the purpose of it was around ocean impact and conservation. Um, and we learned so much about like the food web there and how important Antarctica is and overfishing that's happening for krill because they think it's a, a good source of fish oil, but it's really not very digestible for humans. And we actually have a project that, that's coming out of this where we're going to use all these amazing marketers and people to, to sell a better product, which is an algae-based product. So it, it turned out even better. And, and I think it's just an opportunity of saying yes, especially these things that might scare you and 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 uh, but also get you inspired like that that you're like oh i really want to go there and then being there was just so powerful um majestic place just incredible and and now of course i feel like an ambassador for antarctica and and what how important it is there i love that with all of your trips with everything that you do and and you've referenced it a few times but i i want to really highlight it with everything that you do in any of your adventures, in any of your companies, there's this huge giving back component and there's this huge um, deeper meaning. Like let's spotlight Antarctica, let's spotlight ocean cleanup, let's spotlight a more sustainable uh, way, let's go algae versus, versus krill. I yeah. mean, all of these things that you do, it's purposeful play yeah exactly and i i think that the purposeful play you know a good example of that was uh, one of our team members suggested that hey we should do well we're, we were going to do a polar plunge anyway and and she's like well why don't we make it like a fun run where people sponsor other people that are going on the ship and want to see them jump in this freezing ass cold water in antarctica and and see what happens so then we ended up very quickly raising thirty five thousand dollars as like a last minute idea for uh the for ASOC, which is like the Antarctic uh, Society of Ocean Conservation or something. It's like a coalition of 27 different countries and organizations or something like that. So it was a very uh, quick kind of thing. And, but it was fun because then we had, we created this whole backstory of this thing called Peter, the Peter Petrovsky uh, Penguin Polar Plunge. And Peter Petrovsky was this penguin puppet that, that was just like, randomly talking about this this polar plunge and and so many people are like oh this is this you know this is great and then you know we like surprises too so we had everyone in maverick speedos and maverick uh, one piece bathing suits for the women and and it was it was really really fun so we're actually going to be on the phone with them later on today talking about you know what can we do to, for part two of this this challenge but but yeah you're right like how do we add like you know working on serious issues but not taking ourselves too seriously is a huge part and also applying brain power, talents, resources. So 
the, you know, the groups that we work with are entrepreneurs and leaders. It's like they have, they have the resources for capital and for, for cash. So we do that. We raise a decent amount of money that way, but even more so and more leverage is getting them involved in, in thinking about and brainstorming and, and working on some of these solutions. And, and that to me has an even greater capacity of, of ripples. And that's what I love. Yeah. The ripple effect. It's profound. So let's, as we start to wrap up here, let's piggyback on that ripple effect. Let's imagine that you've surpassed your 111 year old self. You are now coming to the end of your life and it's been the life best lived. You have lit a thousand suns who are lighting a thousand suns who are lighting a thousand suns and your ripple effect has been profound. What do you want to be remembered for? What do you want them to say about you? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it just to me feels like if, uh, if we could have had some fun together, if uh, there's some good funny stories about some random things that, that we, we did together and instigated a bit of mischief, and, and fun that turned into something meaningful and impactful. Um, that, that's what I'd love to, to know and hear, like the, the, the stories, the fun, the, the impact. Um, you know, so many times, and, and I've, I've felt this way many times, it's like you don't know exactly the effect that you're having with, with people. And, and so um, what I've tried to do even more so is go back to someone that might never have known that they had an impact in my life. Like I remember writing a letter back to my fourth grade and sixth grade teacher. I had the same teacher uh, for, for two years. And she was like one of the first people that really saw me for, for who I am. And, and you know, the, that kind of mischievousness, but also, you know, that light that wants to make the world better. And she really encouraged that in her own way. And I wrote her a note and she said it was like one of the most meaningful full things that she ever received. And I found her on Facebook. And, and so, you know, if if I could, you know, get a small little fraction of, of that back, that's really, really powerful to hear how I've changed people's lives. But but more so, you know, maybe even making that a, a call to action or a homework assignment for anyone to to maybe write a note, you know, not a text, but an actual note, uh, ideally a handwritten note to somebody that's made a difference in your life and 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 show them how how they've made a difference because it has such the ripple of impact that way. I love that. And yes, everyone out there, think of somebody who has made a difference in your life. Pull out a pen and a piece of paper or uh, a, a crayons <laughs> or markers and doodle, um, doodle as, as Yannick loves to do. Um, and just let them know, let them know how they yeah. impacted you. Let them know what that word that 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 encouraging word or that belief um that they held in you or them seeing you the difference that that's made i think that's that's really really powerful it, it's amazing and and the handwritten notes are just so so powerful especially in this digital age it, it makes such a all the difference in the world and i've, I've kind of upgraded my my own notes where now i have like a a fun little seal that has the cosmic uh, lightning bolt logo on it but you know i, I love that kind of stuff and it just you know reminds me every single time I, I I have a note that's sent out to someone how meaningful it is. I remember one of our Maverick members. She told me like a note that I had sent her like literally was sitting on her desk, and I had never known that just because it was you know it, it's just you know you never know. Yeah. And uh, and of course you know this cosmic journal is a great way of getting into my world and 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 really you know when I hand it to people I say this is the galactic instruction manual you were you were missing when you were born to fulfill your destiny here so that. That's a great way of getting into the world, and, and it works like an oracle. So you can pop open a page. Um, all right, I'm going to see what uh, – here we go. Here's the perfect ending for us. And yes. I'll, 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 read, I'll read that if you want, if we have time. Yes, for absolutely. All right. I, that feels like a pretty perfect one. So, you know, again, this works like an oracle. And, and so I just pulled this, this page, and it says, Dare Greatly. What would be felt 300 years from now? Your greatest work stands the power of the centuries. What are you doing that will truly create your legendary legacy? So the D in dare, the D stands for discover. Discover what you are uniquely designed to do here. Your greatest journey is truly understanding your divine combination of skills, talents, natural attributes, past experiences. A, 
activate, activate your unique genius, stand in your voice and power of who you were meant to be, accelerate it, step forward and proclaim your place. R, re-remember, re-remember who you are, a perfect and infinite spiritual being experiencing this time and space because you chose it for your growth. Re-remember your true mission here, why you came. And the E is evolve. Take your biggest dream for the greatest collective and follow it. What is your next chapter that will dwarf everything up to this point, utilizing what you've already built and achieved? So dare greatly, D-A-R-E. That couldn't be more perfect as a way to take us home. Thank I you so it. much Please. for spending this time with us today. Before we sign off, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience? I think that's it. Um, you know, really look for that that magic and the synchronicity. I, I love that. It's um, you know, it really is kind of a wink from the universe across time and space about if you're on the right path or not, and and just start being more aware of that. And and you know, that's why tools like the Cosmic Journal are, are really fun to play with because it allows you to to step into you know that that higher self of of where you're meant to be going, and then start listening to things it could be could be numbers that are activation numbers it could be songs it could be you know who knows something that's meaningful to you and these synchronicities like those are the, are, are these real taps from from the universe for sure about okay what what pay attention over here not maybe over here and, and then see especially and especially if it doesn't totally make logical sense that's that's always a good one too and that takes a, a bit of a leap of faith and 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 just to just to see what happens because there's nothing worse than, you know, having 10, 20, 50 years go by and be like, oh, I, I wish I had done this. Or I, I really felt in my heart that I wanted to make this um, it, it, just impression in the world or this, you know, this gift that I wanted to share. But, I, you know, I was, I was always a little bit too scared or it's never the right time. It's never going to be the right time. It's just, you know, we can always have so many excuses. So um, just, just see what you can do. The time is now, right? The time is now. Time is now, and the time is always now, and the time is now, absolutely. The time is now, just do it. So how can people get a hold of you? How can they contact you? How can they be part of the adventures that you form or the um, the organizations that you helm? Well, I think that, you know, for, for entrepreneurs who are leaders in their field, they can check out maverick1000.com, so the number 1000. Um, I also blog every once in a while at yonicksilver.com. And, um, and you know, I'm, I'm fairly, eh, I don't know, I'm not super active, but on Instagram is probably the place that I'm most active-ish, so at Yannick Silver. Yeah. Thank you so much, Yannick. Thanks, Sally. Thanks for having me on. So really much, appreciate it.